Hey everyone, and welcome to this Dota 2 Beginner's Guide on how to offlane. Offlane heroes, or the position 3 hero, is one of the heroes that has the greatest impact on the game based on their ability to disrupt the opposing team's primary carry's farm. That sounds like a lot of work, and it is, and it's even more work because you have to gather farm on your own. So it's one of the most contentious positions in Dota 2, because you are contesting farm on the opposing team, maintaining a lane presence, while also trying to acquire farm for yourself. It's one of the most difficult positions in the game, and one that if you can excel in, you'll find yourself climbing the ranks. Now, they tend to be very tanky heroes, or heroes with uh, a lot of escape uh, capabilities, okay? Let's talk about them. So who are the offlaners of Dota 2? Currently, there are 30 heroes designated with the offlane role at higher levels using the Dota Plus Assistant. Now, while position 1 and 2 heroes tend to be carries, offlaners can transition into semi-carries later in the game. That's important to understand. Um, they are also responsible for initiating fights, which means that they tend to be the first one in to set up a uh, favorable combat situation for your team. Some examples of semi-carry offlaners can be, um, Pango's a great example of that. Um, another good example is uh, Bristleback. Bristleback with a lot of farm can be an absolute nightmare. Doom is a great example of that, a very high farm hero. Uh, Legion Commander with enough dual wins could be an absolute nightmare for the opposing team. There are a lot of heroes here that have a lot of different capabilities. Uh, offlaners tend to be some of the most flexible heroes in the game. Magnus is an offlaner that you often even see played in mid because of the strength of reverse polarity, which we'll talk about shortly. There is a lot of variance here, and I'm sure you'll find an offlane hero that you love. The stress of playing offlane, though, is legitimate because it is a very demanding position in this game. Now, just as a quick recap, because I know this is beginner guide series and you might be new to the game, you should be new to the game. Let's first of all talk about what the offlane is. So let's talk to about our trusty map here. So we have our trusty map. Let's assume we are the radiant, so we're green. So the safe lane is going to be at the bottom because we have our uh, tower here. And those are our two. So this is our position one carry and our position five support. They're trying to get the most farm in the game. This is your mid lane, your position two heroes, because they're trying to access significant farm. They're also leveling faster, bear that in mind. And then you have the offlane for us here, the Radiant offlane, because this is where our tower is. So we're very far from safety, the safety of our tower, while the opposing safe lane heroes are very close to their tower. This is where the offlane heroes reside, your, uh, your position 3 offlaner and your position 4 support. And their goal, again, is to contest the jungle, make sure that they don't get farmed, stay in lane, have a big presence, okay? And again, strength-based ba uh, heroes tend to excel in this role. So again, uh, if you are dire, your offlane is going to be bottom, because look, you're here, and this is where your tower is, okay? So it's the opposite side. So bottom is the offlane for dire, while the, the safe lane is their top. Now, there are a ton of items in this game, but I want to focus on two for this beginner's guide because if you are playing offlane or you want to master playing offlane, you start by mastering these two items under most circumstances, Blink Dagger and Blade Mail. Blink Dagger is excellent because what it does is, just as I said before with initiation, Blink Dagger allows you to set up very favorable team fights, okay? It allows you to initiate. It's important you remember that there's a three second cooldown if you take damage. So Blink Dagger is very rarely used as an escape. It's usually used to jump into the fight, set up the fight for your team, and then, um, you know, you're in there get the fight on pop your blade mail which blade mail what it does is it it returns uh damage back to people who attack you which is great and it also includes includes a passive damage return so even when it's not active you're getting some uh, some damage returned back it also increases your last hit uh, last hit capabilities and your armor all super valuable for off laners these are two extremely core items on most of these heroes um when we talk about example heroes here let's talk about magnus okay Magnus is a very prototypical um, offlane hero because of how tanky he is. He also has a lot of ability to set up kills with his skewer, and but you also see him in mid because of reverse polarity. Now, remember how I talked about how the Blink Dagger was a very core item? The Blink Dagger is key because of the strength of reverse, uh, reverse polarity. It is an absolutely insane 
game winning ability because of the stun duration. If you blink dagger in, you reverse polarity and suddenly you've set up your team for success. Okay. And so that is why you need to get a blink dagger. And that's why Magnus works in, in a position two or three to get the farm that Magnus needs to get that blink dagger. It is an absolutely required item on Magnus. Now let's move to another off lane example, which is Axe. Axe is like the pr like the prototypical offlaner. Super tanky, okay? Tons of hit points. Very disruptive uh, to uh, in a combat scenario. Um, he takes advantage of both Blade Mail, Blink Dagger, and Berserker's, uh, Berserker's Call, which is his primary kind of ability. This is the this is the bread and butter of uh, of Axe. And basically, what he does is he taunts and gains bonus armor. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna focus all the opposing uh, damage uh, onto him. And if he activates the blade mail, basically everyone's forced to attack him. He has increased armor, which increases his resistance to the incoming damage anyway. He's got blade mail, which increases his damage resistance because of the armor being applied. And he's reflecting the damage back. It is incredible. That is one of the one-two punches in Dota 2. If you are off laning, you have to learn the blade mail, blink, and the berserker's call combo. Uh, because it is truly remarkable. And again, see how these items activate... This hero in a very unique way because without without those items berserkers call yeah you're just taunting with bonus armor yeah they're hitting you so it gives your team a little bit of time but with blade mail now you're doing damage back so now you're count like if, if you're against a you know faceless void who's really farmed up and he's doing tons of damage well that damage ends up just being reflected back on himself so that's why axe is so important legion commander is very similar except this time it's dual uh, what you're going to do is with duel, so you blade mail, you blink in, you cast the duel, and then what ends up happening is that you force the opposing team into a situation where they're going to be constantly, um, you know, take, they're forced to fight you and being forced to take on that damage, okay? It's very important that you also understand that heroes cannot use items or abilities, so that's why you have to proc or use your blade mail before you duel, because if you duel before you use your blade mail, then you're just wasting the item. It's going to be dead in the slot. So, uh, Legion Commander, once again, another person uh, that really emphasizes itemization in the off lane. And I just wanted to illustrate to you some of these combos you can use with Blink Dagger and Blade Mail. Now, disrupting the opposing carry might be the single most important thing you do. And, like, for instance, I play off lane often with someone like Razor. Razor is not necessarily an off lane hero, can play mid, can play safe, very versatile. But Razor can steal the carry's damage and really reduce their ability to A, get kill you, and B, to farm through last hits, right? So, as an off laner, you really want to disrupt the opposing carry. You do that by denying creeps, which denies golden experience. Uh, you can zone them out of the lane, right? Which means that basically you position yourself so that, like, they can't really access the last hits well. Your a really good support will help you do this as well. You can kind of make it very challenging or detrimental to the opposing carry's health by getting too close to those last hits, right? Constantly poking them. Uh, you know, if you have an un if you're underlord and you're you know casting it in uh, you know uh, you're casting in a manner that kind of isolates the opposing uh, opposing units. You know, you can do things like that to really f uh, zone them away from the farm that they need. You, are, you can also disrupt pulls and steal neutral stacks. Now, disrupting pulls is more of a position 4 thing. Um, you know, supports should be stealing those pulls. Uh, but uh, if they if they uh, stack uh, neutrals and you see that through your observer wards or through your scouting, go steal them. Bristleback can clear, uh, you know, Bristleback acts. They can clear those waves very quickly. Not waves, sorry. The, the stacks very quickly. And finally, you disrupt the opposing carry by taking them down, right? If they make the mistake of getting too close to you, Berserker's Call, focus fire them. Now, here's the thing. A lot of carries tend to start weaker, and they ramp later in the game. So, there's very few carries with a lot of kill potential early. Like, Ursa is an example where, like, you don't want a 1v1 for Ursa. Because Ursa can kill you. But Anti-Mage... Anti-Mage doesn't have that kill potential that Ursa does. So if you see Anti-Mage or PA, Phantom Assassin, for instance, these are heroes that you can take on as an axe. And if your support is doing some good work, right? Uh, if, you, if you have a support that can do the damage or kind of contribute, um, then you can, you can actually kill them, take them out of the lane, and uh, take, like, remember, when they die too, they also lose uh, gold. They lose their unreliable gold. So disrupting the opposing lane is so key. 
really make it hard for that carry to get the gold they need. That is one of your primary jobs. Now, starting items is almost impossible to talk about in a very broad sense because they are like very game situation, uh, situational. So if you're against like, if their position five is an undying, for instance, you're gonna want you're gonna want a uh, magic stick. Any hero, if you're if you're against the Skywrath Mage or heroes that cast a lot, you can take advantage of a magic stick to heal yourself. But let's assume you're not in that situation. Magic stick, you'll get you'll get accustomed to figuring that part out. Now, here's a couple of examples of setups you can use with your first 600 gold, okay? So you have this setup here, which is six tangos. You have the, the tango, not the tango, this healing self, quelling blade, and the ring of protection. Now, the ring of protection is great on heroes like Bristleback, Axe, uh, Centaur, uh, War Runner. Uh, heroes that can really absorb a ton of damage, that extra armor really makes a difference. Um, you want the tangos, obviously, because that's passive healing. Very, very efficient healing. Uh, you want the tango because you have to stay in lane. You have to stay in lane. You cannot go back to fountain. You want that extra heal. And if anything, hopefully your position 4 has a tango too, not a tango, a healing self, so they can heal you up as well. But this is so important for you to carry. You need to have a presence in lane. Now, the, the quelling blades are used to uh, ensure last hits. You can also do some other stuff like this. Uh, you know, you can get better lanes into, uh, you can cut down trees to get better lanes, uh, better access through their jungle. That's a more complicated thing. But realistically, it provides a lot of bonus damage to getting last hits. And as a position three, you're gonna wanna be getting last hits. All right, and the items at the bottom are good examples of how you can use starting items to transition into the early game. Now, if you're running a strength hero, you need the regen. Regen is always mandatory. You want the last hit and deny capabilities of the Quelling Blade, but then you got the Gauntlet. That extra three strength, it's extra HP, it's extra regen, it's extra damage for strength heroes. You want it. And the nice thing about that as well is you can transition this into a very efficient early game because you have items here. Sorry, you have stats here on the, the, uh, the gauntlet. You have stats on the circlet. And then you have a relatively low cost recipe that gives you a bracer. And now you have increased resistance in the lane to damage, increased regen, increased overall capability and it's a very clear and concise step, right? It's a very good way of kind of solidifying your presence in the lane. You sacrifice a little bit of regen and burst healing here, but what you ultimately get to pull off is, you know, a little bit of added sustain. One thing I should mention as well is you have a tango here for the stats, but also not a tango, a branch. You put the branch on the ground, so you actually use the uh, the branch to make a tree, and then you use the tango on that tree that you created with the branch, and you get bonus healing, by the way. But these are examples of starting items. As you become more familiar with he uh, different heroes, you're going to be able to, like, kind of, um, you know, determine which starting items are best for given which search, uh, situations. But if you're completely new and you're just starting, here are multiple starting uh, jumping off points for you, okay? Now, I'll see you in the next video. That's gonna be how to support in Dota 2. I hope that this guide helped you. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you guys so much for watching and a very special thank you to all of my wonderful subscribers. We'll see you next time.